Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics and in this video I wanted to talk about something that causes a lot of confusion and that is, will driftwood lower the pH of the water in your aquarium? And the answer is yes and no. And I think this is where the confusion comes in because it really depends on your water chemistry to start. Now to better understand what we're going to talk about today, I highly recommend two other videos after you watch this. We have done videos on water hardness and we have done videos on pH of water. I will put those down in the description below as well as in the upper right hand corner, but those videos are going to go into much greater detail about why water parameters exist the way they do and how to impact them. But one of the most common things that you see is when people ask questions, hey, how do I lower the pH of my aquarium? From time to time, you will see responses. Hey, put driftwood in your aquarium, and then you'll see all these people say that doesn't work. Why is that? Well, today what I want to do is I want to take us around the fish room, and I'm going to show you a couple things, at least as it pertains to our water. So we're going to take our handy-dandy pH meter, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of our aquariums. And we're going to look at the pH, and then I want to show you what the pH is of some of the tanks that have rather large pieces of driftwood and we're gonna see if it matters and then we're gonna talk about why we get the results that we do. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at this multi-tank that we just set up. It's got sand, it's got shells, it's got rocks. Let's take a look and see what the pH is. And by the way, the meter that I'm using, I will put that in a link, an Amazon affiliate link down in the description below. I love this thing. It's so much easier than trying to use either the strips or the liquid test kits. You just stick this thing in there, wait about 20, 30 seconds, let this thing equilibrate. We can see here that we are right around an 8.0. That's about typical for us. It also reads the temperature. And so this is basically our normal water. And so the question is, what's it going to look like when we put this thing in a tank that has a lot of driftwood? And I think what we're going to do is we're going to use the tank that Joanna just set up. That 20 gallon has a monster piece of driftwood. So this is the tank where we just did a massive piece of driftwood in that 20 gallon. It is huge, a huge, huge, huge piece of driftwood. And we can see here that our pH is right around a 7.8. And that's with a massive piece of driftwood and a brand new setup. So we're really not seeing that much of a difference. All right, so what happened? Why is there not a big difference between that 40 gallon breeder that's essentially just got a few fish, water, some rocks, and some sand, and then you look at that 20 gallon tank and you've got a massive piece of driftwood that easily takes up more than 50% of the volume of that tank and when we look at the pH, there really isn't that much of a difference. We basically went from around an 8 to about a 7.8. And we're told sometimes that if you add driftwood, it's a great way to lower pH. And we just showed, at least in our fish room, it really doesn't have that big of an impact. And in fact, if I were to do a water change on this 20-gallon tank and remove some of the tannins that have been produced since we put that, that piece of wood in there, the pH would gradually probably start to rise again. So where do we go wrong? Where are the misconceptions? First thing, wood is an organic piece of matter. And so what's going to happen as you put wood in a fish tank, especially if you don't boil it, is you're going to get a release of a lot of tannins. Because that wood is organic, you're also going to begin to see organic materials, which are often acidic, leaching out into the water and the surroundings. So yes, while the wood can contribute acidic byproducts to the surrounding environment, there's something else going on there. And this is where it's so important. If you watch the videos on pH and water hardness, you'll start to really appreciate this. It's not just about the pH. Depending on where you live, your water may have a higher or lower KH, carbonate hardness. This is essentially the buffering capacity of your water. So I think where the real argument comes in is when people don't understand their KH and make a determination about what's going to work to adjust the pH overall. So here's the bottom line. The higher your carbonate hardness is, the more likely your ecosystem, your water, is going to resist changes in pH. Now usually what happens is you have a higher carbonate hardness. That often means your pH is going to be a little bit higher as well. So here's what happens in our water. We have a relatively high pH, around 8 to 
and our carbonate hardness is usually between 10 and 12 degrees, which means it's somewhere around 7, 170 to just over 200 parts per million carbonate hardness. Again, that is a measure of how well our water is buffered, how well it's going to resist changes and fluctuations in pH. And so when we put large, and this is a really large piece of driftwood in a relatively small tank, when we do that, or maybe you've heard, oh, I can put peat moss or peat in a filter and that's gonna lower the pH. And then people do that and they realize, wow, this really isn't having an impact on my pH. Or you start to add chemicals to your water and you're adding these chemicals and nothing is happening. And all of a sudden you get a major change. The reason why that often happens, if you have a high carbonate hardness, you have high buffering capacity, and those pieces of driftwood and the organic material isn't going to impact your water quite as much. Now, here's what happens if someone has water parameters that are right around neutral or maybe just above, but very low carbonate hardness, you can potentially put driftwood or peat or do something to your water to lower the pH, and it may have a much larger impact. So it really does depend on that carbonate hardness. And oh, by the way, if you're someone who's got a pH that's a seven or above, and you have really low carbonate hardness, you have to be super careful about your water parameters. You have to be far more careful about your water changes and making sure that you're not having nitrate buildup in the water and fish waste. And yes, things like driftwood or catapa leaves or choya wood, that can also have an impact on your pH if your carbonate hardness is low. So I wanted to do a video about this just because I think it's a common misconception. If you put driftwood in your tank, it's going to somehow impact the pH and it really does depend upon your water parameters. And so you might wanna check that before you start adding large pieces of driftwood or trying to adjust your pH. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.